go to webinar window. Um, so please put them um, in there and I will make sure that uh, we get those addressed for you here today. Um, so with that, um, we are going to be talking about several of our WS tools for purchasing. Um, we're really gonna hone in on some of the uh, tools that are probably uh, people's favorites, um, the most popular. We won't demo all of them here today, um, but we're gonna make sure that uh, I show and demo kind of our top three or four there um, for our uh, purchasing, okay? So here everyone should be seeing my screen. Um, so we have, you know, probably, I, I should actually do, actually count how many there is here one day, but I know that we have um, over 50, 50 WS tools that span across all of the uh, modules in, uh, in GP, as well as we have some specific ones for our uh, key to act users as well. Um, but today we will we'll focus on um, these six uh, purchasing ones. All right. Okay. So um, our our first one, and this one is probably our, our definitely our most popular and, and possibly my favorite as well. Um, it is our vendor change products. And what it allows you to do is, if you've uh, started a purchase order um, and you somehow um, selected the wrong vendor, or um, that vendor can no longer um, deliver on, on said uh, products, um, we allow you to um, change the vendor ID instead of having to copy and paste. I will skim over some of these uh, pretty quickly here so um, we can show you them, okay? Um, same thing with the PM on the uh, payables vendor change allows you if you're entering a payables transaction, as long as it is not posted, we can change that uh, vendor as well, so you don't have to start over. Okay, and so after vendor change, PM on apply uh, has definitely been a, uh, a crowd favorite um, that uh, allows people to um, save, save some time. It moves all of those, it allows you to move historical transactions back to open. Um, and so you can then um, apply them correctly, but we will uh, get much more into that one, okay? Um, some products that we probably won't uh, necessarily demo today, but I just want you to be aware that we have them. Um, the first one is our drawer product. Um, what it does is it allows you um, to take um, your attachments um, within GP and categorize them into folders. Okay, and those are all self-labeled. And in those folders, if there's sensitive information, you can put security on that. So um, only the people who have access to it can view those documents. Um, but uh, as I said as well, you can also organize them into different folders. Okay, um, quick PO. This one is uh, uh, really helps enable your field resources. What it allows you to do is um, someone can just send an email with with, base, with the vendor information and it will um, go through an automated process and it'll return back a PO number. So if you have someone say standing at, um, you know, one of your suppliers and need a purchase order number, um, you know, to pick up the, those supplies, well, if you're unable to get a hold of someone um, in the back office or just kind of reduce that burden um, on them to keep things going, you can just simply send an email with the vendor name. It will um, return back a PO number and then you can add those details. The, um, the back office can always um, add those details later. All right. Then this is uh, a couple of these next one. These are some of our newer tools. And um, this one is, I wouldn't necessarily call it a tool. However, it is a uh, fantastic uh, vendor inquiry window. What it does is um, from this side of things, it is a very interactive window. And what it can do is um, you can see all of your uh, 
um, payables that you owe in all your different periods of when they're due, um, past history, um, export that, ex, excuse me, um, export them um, to Excel and work from there. Okay. And then for our, um, this one is for our key to act customers. Okay. Um, what it allows you to do is you can uh, modify vendor IDs or combine them and uh, it will you it will work with key to act all right so all right let's get out of the powerpoint because that's that's not nearly nearly as fun and i did cruise through those uh rather quickly there all right so um let's get into the demo here um before i do that let me just uh i'm just going to check to see if there's any questions or anything looks like we're good all right so let's start with um, our vendor change product um, from our purchasing this is definitely um, our I, i'd say people's number one favorite and um, it uh, can certainly eliminate some headaches um, for you here all right so let's start with um, the po vendor side of things what this allows you to do is if you've accidentally selected the wrong vendor or that vendor can no longer um, say deliver um, as long as the uh, purchase order nothing has been received or invoiced um, or there's no prepayments to you to it we will um, this product can help you change the vendor id um, and, and switch all of the information so you don't have to enter all those lines again okay I had entered a purchase order earlier, so let me just grab it. Okay. So here's a purchase order. What you'll notice here right away, PO2259. I've filled this out, um, but you know what? My vendor was not Bob. So what we will do is if we go up to the additional, change vendor ID, we can then use the lookup and instead of um, Bob here, we're gonna switch this to Tim. We'll go commit. And you'll see PO2259 has switched to the vendor name Tim. And so you can do that um, as long as, uh, as I said before, as long as um, none of the line items have been received. Um, it has not been invoiced um, and there's no prepayments on there. Okay. So let me just close that and I'll show you that just right from the start real quick. So purchase order entry. Let's do that. You'll notice before I even get to the vendor ID, this PO number will uh, automatically gray out and you can't switch it so uh, let me just go aa insulation all right let's say i've now entered it but oh shoot that is not the right vendor i can easily go up to my additional button change vendor id and we are going to switch that to bob commit and now that purchase order um, number has been switched to Bob. So uh, this can uh, help eliminate that, you know, that co cancel, copy, um, delete, um, and where it can kind of really um, build up all those those purchase order um, for you and um, make the switch. Okay. So that is our PO vendor change product. Moving over to the vendor, the uh, payable side so that uh, product also um, allows you to also if you've entered um, a voucher for a a vendor but um, you know same thing right it was the wrong one instead of having to rekey all of um, the details here and the distributions um, we can switch it to the vendor Okay, so let me, I will 
let's just stick with Bob and Tim here today. They seem to be my, my favorites here, okay? So as long as this isn't posted, I would be able to switch it. So um, if I've filled out all of this information, you know, $10, okay? And I saved it, maybe I put it in a batch or something um, to that nature, okay? Same thing, like the PO side, we're gonna go up to additional and change vendor ID, okay? So that wasn't actually for Tim, that was for Bob. We'll switch it and you'll see that voucher number remain the same, Bob. And, you know, really the, the whole thing here is um, I certainly make a lot of mistakes in it. And uh, um, what we want to try and do is help uh, eliminate or help uh, make those corrections a lot faster. So that was our uh, PM vendor change side of things. Okay. We'll delete that. All right. So let's uh, transition over to PM on apply. So what um, PM on apply lets you do is whenever you, um, excuse me. So PM on apply enables you to um, take those documents that are in history and move them back to open. So, and then allowing you to reapply accordingly. Okay, so let's just first start to, and take a look at um, my vendor here. Pull up Tim. So one of the things, you know, with, with GP, as soon as, you know, that, invi that invoice, that credit memo, um, really it comes down to, it becomes a zero balance, it moves to history. Well, at that point, um, you're you're kind of uh, in a in a tough spot because you aren't able to um, unapply and move those things back to make the proper correction for you. All right. So here is just some transactions here with um, with uh, my vendor Tim. Here on the right hand side, you'll see that these are in um, history. So when I'm in on these. I'm unable to um, do any type of um, unapply if you know that invoice or that payment was was incorrect. Okay. Well, in this case, what I'm going to show you is here we have a credit memo that has been applied to this invoice. So here's credit memo um, six nine five. And it has been applied to um, invoice ending in uh, 694. Well, if that credit memo was actually supposed to be um, applied to um, this invoice here back in open, you know, we would have to um, do some quite a few additional documents to make that happen. Or we can use PM and apply, where we are going to uh, move that credit memo. We're going to move it back to open, and um, then apply it to this the, the correct invoice. So what I'll do is under my utilities, I'm going to go to unapply payables transactions. This is our PM unapply window. Let's find Tim. So um, across this, as soon as I find Tim, we'll, we'll read display. You know, I could have searched by my, my document number, document type, document date or type and entered that information in here, okay? So immediately what you'll have is these are in, in history, okay? So they have been these invoices, payments, um, finance charges, credits, they have been uh, fully fully applied. So um, here across the top, let's just kind of take a look here once again at that credit memo. 
All right. So credit memo 695 has been applied to this invoice ending in 694. Well, as I kind of said before, um, this credit memo, we, we've fully applied that to the wrong invoice. We want to put that somewhere, put that uh, to our um, invoice two. So across here, I am going to hit my unapply um, selection and apply. So now that I've hit that, when the window clears, I know that uh, it successfully went through. So just kind of going back here, um, all of the documents that were a part of that will move back to open as well. So um, those come back where those can be then uh, um, handled accordingly. So at this point, PM on apply has, has done it, its work here. And if I just go to my apply payables, let's grab Tim. All right. There's that credit memo that I have. So that was just moved from history to open without having the rekey. And now at this point, that's the one it came from. I can now apply that to the appropriate invoice. Okay. And then I'm set. Right. That was uh, PM and apply. Let me, I will just pause there. See if there, there's any questions. Looks like we, we're okay. All right. Okay. So let me, uh, I will just show you here, here one more. Um, let me just show you drawer. So what drawer lets you do is if I if I pick my vendor and I hit drawer, what this lets you do is organize your attachments in GP into folders, and you can also um, put security on those on those folders. So if you um, you know I can see any documents or attachments in W9s, but um, Susie can't. We could put security so only. Um, you know, the people that we grant access to can see that. This becomes a, a lot more relevant when we start looking at, you know, employees and, and sensitive information there, but we do have a carry over to our vendors. So you'll see here, you know, here is, a, here's an attachment under our W9s where you can get to it. But if I were to then look at, you know, any NDA that, I don't have any, but it won't uh, um, pull up that that document. These are all self-label, right? So I can change the name of the folder to however you'd like. Okay, and there it is. So just a, a really quick one there. Okay. All right. So with uh, with that, I know I uh, definitely um, went through those very quickly um, as far as our purchasing, but I just really wanted to kind of get you give you um, a, a good taste of some of the capabilities and in what we have to op offer here um, in in our purchasing here. So I we showed you the vendor change, which allows you to change uh, a purchase order or payables transaction to a different vendor. The PM on apply, which can um, take those fully applied documents in history and move them back to open, so you do not have to um, rekey. Okay, and then we just and then we showed uh, drawer here. Lastly, um, I did not uh, show you the quick PO or any of the the uh, vendor inquiry or modifier windows. However, 
um, we do right on our website, um, you can always find um, much more information as far as um, other recordings. So if I, on our website, so um, there are additional details where you can see short recordings, uh, more information about the product. So you can always refer back to these um, here. And of course, we would absolutely um, be happy to give one-on-one uh, -on -one demos of these products um, or answer those specific questions for you as well. And then additionally, on our website, um, you can always find any of our past uh, webinars and sign up for webinars right here um, in our uh, under our events tab. Okay. Um, so with that, that is, uh, I know that we only set aside um, 30 minutes here today. Let me see if there are any questions here. Oh, oh. looks like uh, the one uh, comment, uh, they, you're able to answer the question yourself. Awesome, excellent. Okay, so with that, thank you so much um, for, for joining today. Um, if you do uh, have any questions that you think of, a um, little later on or um, want to run past some specific scenarios to see um, if, if these tools would be a good fit for you, um, please don't hesitate to uh, call us or email us and um, be happy to continue that conversation. So with that, I hope everyone has a great rest of their, their day. Thank you so much. Bye.